All right, so uh, we're about to start our <coughs> program this morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to our uh, forum this morning. Uh, it, it's a pleasure for us to have our ambassador to the Federal States of Micronesia to be with us this morning to address uh, these remarks regarding the current movement, choke independent movement. So feel free to ask questions uh, during the time for questioning. Uh, but first we will start with an, an uh, opening prayer. So may I ask uh, one more cast to open our forum with a word of prayer. Avi <laughs> My God, Father, if I should want to put it, we visit. If it did not be in it, to where, where I am, we said to be so good, in so good, my God, on to be a brother. Kaikin Amare, Kapan Kirke, what is it to Kaifi, yes, you can not find so in the visit. Number eight, ask in so good, my God, very fun so. Kisu Kaipuri Kaparota, Ikiri, you put she put you on. To visit Sarah, Kirevan, they were born of the Fidu. A Sarava, Aluki, or a Sarava, native, we pour up the Batsi, if a borrower are waiting in the Archia, eating in Fansu. I put the world of my good to see myself, and now she did put a program to Karaban, told me for the Sopra. Yes, Yoda, may ask the world of my good to the cities. Amen. Thank you, uh, Reverend Kass. At this time, I would like to call up on our ambassador, uh, Mr. Robert Riley, from the uh, United States of America to our Federated States of Micronesia to address his remark. Mr. Robert Wright. Thank you very much. So, uh, we have plenty of chairs up here. Come on up. I, I'd like to make this uh, an interactive meeting. So, uh, I'm going to say a few things at the outset, but then I'm going to open up for questions and comments. And um, as part of this discussion, we will have a translator, I believe, is that right? So that uh, this, what I will be saying will be translated into Chukis as well. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this will be, I hope, mostly devoted to your questions and your comments. There are a few things I'd like to say at the outset. First of all, what I'm going to be presenting to you today is not my personal opinion. It is the policy of the United States government. And I think that really needs to be clear. I'm not presenting something that I believe, I'm presenting what has been, is long-standing U.S. policy, and I am merely a cog in that huge U.S. Gov government machine, uh, and I'm the face of that machine, if you will, giving you the policy of the United States government during this, uh, this meeting. Uh, would you like to translate that? Okay, uh, thank you, Ambassador. 
Marasi po ay translate ni meta pa pasang kids misile po ay ni kids educators kids po ay ni fossil merka ay request po si po ay translate ni meta pa pasang po kids misile pa ay kung ay po ay translate si po ay sa kung ano talaga ni para kung kung meta ay talaga ni po ay at si po ay bear with us as we translate the message from the ambassador kini si po ay si po para sa kung ano talaga ni Um, I would also like to add, before I go into my remarks, this is a big crowd. It's probably the biggest crowd I have ever had here in the Federated States of Micronesia. So obviously, there are strong feelings about this subject in Shuk, and on both sides. And I certainly appreciate that. And I don't want to dimin diminish anybody's opinions. I understand that this is an important issue for Chuk. And I, I, I do appreciate that. Ambassador, I have a question about the city of 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 the So, uh, kind of in regards to that same subject, the United States takes no position on the impending vote in Chuk. The What I am here to do is simply to restate U.S. policy regarding the compact and how it would be affected by Chuk independence. And we, the United States, and the United States people have very strong and close bonds with the Chukis people, dating back to World War II. And we want those to continue, and they will continue. But I also need to give the, the reality of what might happen should Chuk be fully independent. Once upon a time, I put a photo of the cards and the good as we US, uh, KTC figure the final US FSM. So, regardless of how the vote goes, as long as it's free and fair, as long as it's free and fair, as long we, uh, regardless of how the vote goes, we will remain friends to Chuk. I just want that to be clear. So, um, so we have had a long relationship with Micronesia, including Chuk, dating back to World War II. And as you all are very much aware, after World War II, the United Nations asked us, the United States, to guide Micronesia to democracy and independence. And uh, we worked with Micronesia to do that. Of course, independence was declared in 1979, and full independence was achieved in 1986 with the signing of the Compact of Free Association. We are very happy and proud and honored by those achievements, and we are feel very close to all of Micronesia, and certainly very much with the Chukis people. And I want that to be clear, and I think we are going to continue with a, a very good relationship, I believe. Buat bakti saya tu hari hari aku tak berros, buat biar aku kau cipet touch, buat yang di kiri saya siper. Oh, sorry, I have to go back a while, further back from the beginning. Alu cip pasal terang di kedok, betul orang apa pasal, mula aku buat tak berros, ni buat cipu air ada ni fira cipu, betul kian tu tu, esok ni fira wide sini, 
ye pocak aporo sare fira chimbet amir kanduk ke betor ka rapal si i chocok ka i ye we sewi nore wat tera ka kan mu a chok oporo de ke opu bet me fia perka pera kan nuk a ke wir rero e ti beure fira de fashap me berka i bi pa pera ta pa pa Ara toto ira go ke met muri ro ari utut ber ka pa chok chi chi ga di chuk ese toto e ke ya ro poe wa ro nga wa ri ke ga chun be te chuk ka bo ko te ko to wan ya chok mo chok poe ra te met muri ro an bo gun e ra utut a chuk stei i mi poe ra te po se di na ro ga ro te bo ko ni ga met tiu muri ri i wen a ro ga ga e ke feru na pacific e ke wer ko ko fa mo se ro ba ora ro ra sai ne ko kam pe to ri na ro e ga ro te bu ko wari mo ru ja to ro fi so na sai e i am me pa pa sai di ar to ar po che che ga di ge ar ar ba se chu ro bo e we we a che pa ta pa ta che ke yo no kam pe ka so uh the united states wants the very best outcome for Chukunitz people. That's our, our clear interest here. That's what we want to do. But I think it needs to be understood that the Compact of Free Association is a very unique document. It does not exist anywhere else in the world. We do not have a Compact of Free Association with any other entity beyond the three freely associated states of the, the Federated States of Micronesia, Palau, and the Marshall Islands. No, it's a passage that I have to pay much of the way around that way. He'd be part of a city, he'd be able to move it on, like that. He'd be able to move it on, like that way. He'd be able to come back, he'd be able to come back to the Pacific. He'd be able to come back to Palau, he'd be able to come back. E kara sok kure ti peure e fira mu e sor tepi no rusia turfa, poi kara cha kara riga no no rusia turfa. So as it is a very unique arrangement that we have, a sort of very unique document and uh, agreement that we have with the three freely associated states, it will not be repeated again. That is not something that either the Congress or the administration has any intention. Of doing again, and I think that needs to be clear for everybody. It has nothing to do with how we feel about the Chukis. It is this was a a unique document that came out of World War II, and uh, there is no intention of doing that again. <laughs> Urur ke kampak ya bukan tak urur berseru bau. Ia benda yang kita ke kampak. Ia apa macam pera tak apa kongres Amerika, ia apa administration. Ia mungkin pera tak apa sah paror, sah perot sah kok kampak ke apa ke visi tak urur ke kira. So, I think I would just like to clarify to everybody here that. Once Chuk or if Chuk decides to be independent, if Chuk is, makes that decision and then becomes fully independent, the United States will not have, will no longer have a compact of free association with Chuk. The, the designation currently for the compact of free association is with the Federated States of Micronesia and legally Unless there is a new negotiation for a new compact, which, as I said, will not occur, there will no longer be a compact of free association with Chuk. Saya cakap kau yang rata kau, Arab kau, bukan orang Arab itu cakap Chuk ni siapa kau, ibu seri apa sih? Esok kor, ini compact ni fira Chuk memerka. So, 
So, of course, there are some ramifications, some things that will happen uh, if Chuuk is fully independent and there is no longer a compact. That means that the free immigration that currently exists between Chuuk and Guam and Hawaii and the rest of the United States will no longer exist. The, uh, there will no longer be the possibility of free movement. It will, there will, the Chukis will then require visas to go to the United States. Similarly, those Chukis who live in the United States will be in legal limbo. What that actually means for those Chukis, I don't know, but they would, they would be in legal limbo and, that would, and the, there would have to be a determination of what their status would be after that happens. Status. And and then of course the 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 trust fund, which be the will be the mechanism by which we provide financial assistance to the Federated States of Micronesia after 2023, when the direct financial assistance ends. Uh, that is in the name of the Federated States of Micronesia. And as such, unfortunately, Chuuk would not be eligible to participate. And just to enumerate a few other things that would be no longer applicable, uh, for example, the Coast Guard search and rescue operations that uh, rescue folks here fairly regularly. Uh, they, the Coast Guard would no longer have the authorization to do that here in Chuuk. The uh, disaster response mechanism currently utilized by USAID and FEMA for reconstruction uh, after a disaster would no longer apply. It would revert to the usual USAID model, which is used everywhere else, uh, which is not nearly as robust as what exists here and is included in the compact. <laughs> Uh, similarly, the ability of the U.S. military to enlist uh, Chukis into the U.S. military would no longer have the authorization that it does in the, in the compact. So that would be become more problematic. And then there are uh, a number of other agencies that work here currently that would probably uh, look again at their engagement here and decide if they should or should not continue, uh, such as Pell Grants for uh, undergraduate education, uh, Center for Disease Control Grants for health-related projects, Human Health and Human Services Grants for Health and Education Sectors, 
Department of Agriculture, Department of Education, Federal Aviation Administration, Federal Bureau of Investigation, all those entities would be reconsidering their engagement here if there was no compact umbrella under which they could work. We have one, Sapa Saporan, your KV2 agencies, and not fan run, America. Catch where we did a car walk at a beginning for federal. It is your party, KXFL, a robot chip, a torn of the road to catch your map. I got to go ready to come back, Minafer Fata Puesapur, Ewin, Ben, Bill Grant, Go Wally, because it's Joshua Moon, or Ruan, CTC. CTC and the Federal Grant Infantry, which gives our public health. What are you? Then the current grant, the current bag in which I be a support and mission our way away. Then education, what are you? Akri. So the reason I'm here, I would not be here if it wasn't for this. The reason I'm here is because there has been some misinformation about what might happen with the compact after full troop independence. And as the U.S. Ambassador representing U.S. policy and in consultation with the U.S. government, I was obliged to come here to clarify what the, the, the intention or what, the, what would happen after in full independence. So I think, I think folks should be realistic. Now, I don't, it's going to be up to you what you decide to do. If you all vote for independence, that's your choice. I just think you need to be realistic and understand what the consequences would be. Now, that's not to say that I'm telling you to vote yes or no. I'm not telling you that. I just want to clarify U.S. policy in regards to the compact. And again, that's not me, that's not my office in Washington, that's the administration and Congress. And that's also because the original compacts were, are so unique and come out of very unique circumstances that it's important to realize that this is not something that the U.S. is going to do again. And, you know, we, we certainly, want the best for Chuk. We want to see Chuk thrive, to do well. That's something, that is, in terms of my, me personally, that's something I very much want. It's one of my top priorities. And I'm doing what I can to, to help with that. But I also have this other, other obligation, as part of my job, to elucidate U.S. government policy when it has been misinterpreted. So I just wanted to bring that out there and make sure that that's understood. Bobo meo chiara chi to to re fira chi kei fere te la chi poi avata avata chi e kua nuk e sab seri i nye seri me regard administration i ke Congress administration me usu chi me a chi executive to re Congress. You will be pushy while you sit. We much a joke a poem. Petra Rock, Nora, Mutton Nora. Yeah, it's a good top way what's a Rafata Vata. Mid Arabas, we were Fiji. If a non noble moon merica, Renner and Luke, Achapo were Fitch, Possepo Kefiroch, Catsapocha Mogotoro, Cassisabocha. So, at any rate, we wish you the very best in your deliberations in the future, and we hope that uh, everything goes well, and we will be following all this closely, and we will, uh, as long as there are free and fair elections, uh, we will support you all the way. Uh, so, I just wanted to to give you the information that you need as far as the U.S. government is concerned on what might happen with independence. And with that, I would like to open it up for questions and comments.
Sesepah macam yang diberisikan ni Sahabat rata Ifa Muridon Kaya sepuh Ibu syurga ya, fesyen Acara yang puh Acara tut Wari Bila pesai Dia puh Pukul-pukul Rena wewe Ya su Reka basis Um, so we have a microphone over here, and anybody who would like to ask a question or or to uh, express a concern is free to use that microphone. Yes, thank you very much. With all due respect to you, Mr. Ambassador, I hope the United States would reconsider for just one more combat. Just one more. Isu campur ni ni kebi arwah sejum berisi, pre-re fansho siaga waktu fuhan. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Tadashi Wainet. I'm so fortunate because I am one of the two surviving members of the Chu delegation to our 1975. Constitutional Convention, which wrote the present FSM Constitution. Mr. Robert is in the mainland. I don't know what happened to him, but he's still alive, and there are only two of us. Now, my question is, how would you relate that U.S. policy in regard to what President Trump stated in his joint address with Prime Minister Teresa in Chequers, England, last July 13, July 13, 2018. I'm sure you are aware of that address, eh? I, I'm not familiar with exactly what, what phrase you were referring to. Okay, here is what I will read. President Trump told the International Press Corps that the relationship of the U.S. to its allies is indispensable. To liberty, justice, and peace, and that the tradition of freedom, sovereignty, and the true rule of law were the <clears throat> shared gift to the world. They must never cease to be united in defense and renewal of those values. Now, this was addressed by President Trump to the entire world. And we believe that this is concerning about freedom and friendship. And a small thing like a combat, you know, to the United States, I don't think will be more valuable to the U.S. because there are certain ways that you can verify or you can uh, change. For instance, if we don't ask for money, we're just asking for uh, non-immigration status. You know, uh, I wonder if the United States would not allow that. Uh, I understand that uh, the Republic of Palau has a compact, but has never been able to be voted to have its own compact funds. And they don't mind that. All they need is the non-immigration status. And to continue, as you said, the U.S. friendship with Chuk as you, you, even if Chuk would decide to be an independent nation, to me, doesn't jive with just a small compact. You know, to eliminate that privilege from the arrangement for Chuk in light of what you said, continue friendship and association with the United States. Thank you. 
Thank you. I certainly understand what you're saying, and it's, it, theoretically it makes sense. Unfortunately, times have changed, and Congress and the administration are not as forthcoming about these sorts of things as they used to be. As you've probably been reading in the news, immigration is a hot topic in the United States right now. And there is less willingness to open borders um, on all sides, some sides more than others. And so I think, while I understand what you're saying in theory, I think the practical issues right now, realistically, are such that I don't think you should count on that. And I don't think that's the US, the US policy is definitely not to count on that. And I think it would be, I think it's something that uh, is very unlikely. Uh, the other thing is, if you look at the history again, I mean, it's important to look at the history of how this all developed. This all started in 1946, when uh, Micronesia became a trust territory of the United States, uh, as it was asked by the United Nations to guide Micronesia to full independence and self-reliance. So, the idea was to do this in stages. The first stage was to start the, the discussions, which happened in the late 60s, early 70s. And as you said, the Constitutional Convention started in 1975. Independence was fin finally uh, declared in 1979, and the compact went into effect in 1986. And the, the, this is all forward movement to allowing full independence and self-reliance. Uh, this, this, if you look at the whole history of how that happened, that's a very long process. And again, thinking about it realistically, you know, in, in World War II, there were a lot of Americans involved in World War II. Hundreds of thousands were in the Pacific. They knew Micronesia. They, uh, they understood Micronesia. They, they worked to, to liberate Micronesia. Millions of people in the United States were reading about this in the newspapers and listening about it in the radio. Everybody knew about this part of the world. It was part of the Pacific Front in World War II. And very important. The, 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 that generation is no longer in power. And Micronesia doesn't have the same sort of high visibility that it used to have. Those folks who were part of World War II were very interested in, in making Micronesia bring it up in, 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 in the economic development of Micronesia, in inculcating democratic traditions, in bringing it to independence, and for them it's a high priority. And all, with all due respect, I don't think the current generation in the United States has that same perspective. As hard as that might be to hear, I, I think it's what you would, that's the reality. Um, and, you know, it's been very clear to me from my discussions with Washington that there will be no more compacts. And this is not me talking. This is, as I said, I'm just, I'm just the voice here. I'm, I'm explaining to you current U.S. policy. And, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate your, your sentiments, but unfortunately, that's not where we are right now. Thank you. I have one more okay. question. If uh, President Trump should emphasize the indispensability of peace as traditional freedom and sovereignty. How would you relate that to the present policy of the United States that they don't want ever to have another combat? 
Well, I, I don't think that the the uh, a, the a for a uh, friendship with Chuk in the future without a compact necessarily invalidates what President Trump was saying. I think the compact itself is the issue, and that's where I think. I, and it's, again, it's not. I'm not talking for myself, and I can't. I can't give you the full explanation. I'm just saying this is where things stand as of now. Don't you think that world peace and the care and noble care of the U.S. citizens are more paramount to the small compact of free association? Well, of course, I think, I'm not sure I exactly understand the question, but I guess well, world peace is certainly our, our major concern. Yes. We must maintain the peace. And you know, I have heard from many experts, uh, I mean excerpt, that some of these superpowers are kind of jealous of the U.S. because he established itself as the police of the world for peace and security. And I'm just wondering whether the U.S. would turn about face and say, well, you know, we're not really interested in maintaining that position and the noble care of our U.S. citizens. You know, I, I'm just kind of confused between those policies and what you just said about uh, the well, I think it is true we are interested in in uh, the rule of law, in uh, free Pacific, uh, all of that's true. Uh, we are, of course, want to ensure the safety of our U.S. citizens, wherever they might be. Um, and I guess everything you said, I think I agree with, but I'm not sure that really has a bearing on the compact. That's not, they're not, it's not something that's being considered as part of the, okay. as part of the compact. Forget about that. <laughs> Uh, another question. I'm sure you know that there are more than 5,000 U.S. citizens born of Turkish mothers and fathers. Right. And how would the uh, United States treat no, those people? That's a very good question. And, and honestly, I don't know the answer. I think that's, a, that's as I said, legal status would be in limbo. I'm not sure that's something that would be decided right away. It's a complex question. Of course, the, the children would be, would be U.S. citizens, of course. Uh, we have the question in the United States right now that's ongoing uh, about uh, parents who are in the United States illegally, uh, but have had children born there, the children are U.S. citizens, what to do about the parents? And uh, right now, that's in limbo. Uh, I think there's a lot of very strong opinions in the United States going both ways. And I frankly don't know where that's going to come out. Thank you. I'm sure you are aware of the provision under the Edison Constitution that a U.S. citizen born of, two, I mean, Edison citizens would have to decide when they reach 18. Mm -hmm. And if they don't do that, then they will remain FSM national. But then, how would those people Think about the United States when the United States doesn't allow them to decide for both to become U.S. and mm -hmm. Turkish citizens. Under this present constitution, they cannot be both U.S. and FSM citizens, mm -hmm. but they will be able to be both under the new constitution of the Chuk. Mm -hmm. Our Republic of Chuk, because for sure the people of Chuk are going to put that in their constitution to make it possible for their children to.
to come back and continue ownership of their property in Jew. Because if they don't do that under the FSM constitution, then who is going to take over ownership and continue those things? Nobody. So that is very important. And I hope the United States will take into great consideration about this fact. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, it is, that is a very perplexing question. It's a very relevant question. It's a question that's being, as I said before, discussed passionately on both sides in the United States right now. Uh, and I don't, I have no idea where it's going to come out. So it's, it's a, that's a valid concern, a valid question. I, but unfortunately, I don't have an answer for that. Yes. of the United States and Jew. Thank you. I, I've never been fearful in my life. I am a lawyer by profession. And when I stand up in court arguing my case, I stand strong and firm without any fear. Today is different. I am shaking for the first time in my life. There is great reason why. All of a sudden, the very confident attorney is now shaking. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, allow me to thank you again for the opportunity to explain U.S. policy to the people of Chu, including myself. In my profession as an attorney, I've reviewed the compact over and over again, and I think I have a good first an understanding of the compact myself. Now, <clears throat> considering the timing of your visit to Chu, we are only about less than nine months away from the plebiscite, at which point the people of Chu would have to decide something. Very important period. So considering the timing of your visit, seems to be very close to the upcoming plebiscite. The ambassador addressing the people of Chuk to clarify the U.S. position or U.S. policy on the compact of the association that, that went into effect, I believe, 1986 or 87, if I am not mistaken. Now, coming to explain U.S. policy with respect to a document, a treaty that went into effect way back in 1986, to this point in time, 
about how many years now after 1986? 96, 2006, 2017, six. It's maybe over 30 years, right? So given that timing, and now <clears throat> it's very close to plebiscite time. I must admit, I think I have an obligation to admit that there are signs out there. I'm sure the great ambassador took time out to see that there are signs out there. While we are blessed that the ambassador is taking the time out to explain even though late in the day, 30 years after, the compact went into effect. I must admit that coming here to clarify a document, a compact that went into effect more than 30 years ago, is not the motivation for this visit. It cannot be. It just cannot be. I want to call upon the minds of the Turkish people to join me in believing that the motivation behind this visit is not really to clarify the U.S. policy on this very document, a provision of which is almost expiring in the next five years. So the timing of the great ambassador coming to visit you to address you on the negative impact that you stands to face should you or as you is entering a period to, to decide whether to pursue the path towards decision toward independence, I must admit you visit. I regret to say that you visit is received with mixed feelings. Incidentally, about four to five years ago, the president of this nation, in responding to this independence initiative, addressed the people of Chu on the same points to clarify the impact of independence on the compact of free association. This was the president of the nation. The very same points I was sitting there listening to you clarifying again were the same points that were addressed by the president of this nation. As one party, we took in the compact of free association. So I can find the authority for the president to clarify to the same its own party what the implications of the compact are, thereby obviating the need for the U.S. to come and make the same clarification. So you're coming here today to clarify those same things that our president had clarified is received with mixed feeling. I must admit, regrettably, especially given the plebiscite that is coming, that is still about eight months from today.
if U.S. If there is something about U.S., I must face the people of you. There is something about the United States that we can call the legacy, the legacy of the United States. What would that be? That's democracy. U.S. is the leader in the free world, world, going around the world, preaching democracy. And this is one thing that we are so grateful about. This is one legacy that the United States, we know. Those negative impacts that the ambassador has just clarified over and over again. Negative on who? On you, right? Impact. There is nothing negative on the side of the United States. Why do we have to hear the negative impacts at this point in time? Your Excellency. What is the real motivation behind you coming at this point in time for the purpose to clarify misunderstanding, purported or alleged misunderstanding? Can I ask that? Yes. Well, first of all, I'd like to make one thing clear. The compact does not end in five years. I repeat, the compact does not end in five years. The I said compact, a provision of a compact the, would when, be ending in five okay, years or something. Please don't interrupt. I didn't interrupt you. Okay. Yes. yes. So the, the, the compact continues in perpetuity. Uh, and does not expire. The one thing that changes is the nature of the financial assistance. And that is important. There's no question about it. So currently, the, uh, the United States provides direct financial assistance to the Federated States of America. After 2023, that will change. At the same time that the United States has been providing direct financial assistance, they've also been putting money in a trust fund. And so, that trust fund will go into effect after 2023, and the Federated States of Micronesia will be using the proceeds of that trust fund to finance sectors in their, in their government. So that's, that's what will happen after 2023. In five years, that will happen. Not to, to minimize that, that's an important transition, and something that I'm very concerned about and working on every day to try to minimize the impact of that. But the compact continues. So everything else in the compact that I've talked about continues. The only thing that changes is the, the nature of the financial assistance, which is important. But uh, it's important to know that the compact is not expired. Now, on the other side, I did mention this previously. I would not be here had there not been uh, misunderstanding, I shall say, of what will happen to the compact after independence. I would not be here. I would, if, if that was, if the, the, the uh, policy had been correctly stated by both sides, I would be back in Ponape or I'd be coming here to, 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 to doing other things. I would not be involved in elucidating what the real policy is. As the U.S. Ambassador, it is incumbent on me to be, to, un to be sure that folks understand what the U.S. policy actually is. And as I said, if the Chukis determine in a free and fair election that they wish to be independent, we will respect that. So that's, that's what our only motivation here, and, I, and this was in consultation with my Washington office and my Washington 
authorities, it was decided that we had to clarify what the U.S. position was. And that's, that's what we're doing. And so I don't have any, I, if, if this decision is made by the true keys to be independent, we will continue to be their friends. This has, it will have to be in a free and a fair election. I mean, we, we want to be sure of that. But as long as the election is free and fair, we will respect the decision. And we will continue to be friends of the true keys. So that's, that's, uh, that's, our, that's the motivation. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador. I'm going to sit down. Before sitting down, <clears throat> again, I regret to inform you that after I walk out of here, and I know there's plenty others with me, they're right to freely express themselves is on shaky ground, if not totally eradicated. Having heard the negative impacts, that would be the impact of two going to the polls, expressing themselves on the question whether two should go down the path towards independence. That these are the impacts. Having heard the impacts, that would totally decapacitate the power to even freely express a decision on this very important issue. I'm afraid your visit is going to come out with this, leaving the Chukis incapacitated as far as their right to freedom of expression. Thank you. Thank you. I just would like to say, just as I think it's important that all the facts be on the table, and in a democracy, that's what is that the truth is essential to any democracy, and full transparency is essential to any democracy. So I think it's important that everybody understand as they go forward, and I think the debate should continue absolutely. But as they go forward, the full facts should be understood. No. By uh, Excellency Ambassador and the audience critics and welcome to you. Thank you. My question is on the issue of denial agreement. I understand that the denial agreement the FSM and the U.S. promised, the FSM promised the U.S. not to allow any other nations to provide security and defense for our people. I understand that the part of the agreement is an attack on the FSM would be interpreted as an attack on the U.S. So if the Chukis like to be independent and they come back no longer applies to the people of Chuk, is the Chukis people vulnerable to any nation? to come and attack two without the U.S. production. Whether U.S. is still applied to, to that agreement? That's my question. That's a good question. Um, Again, it's the, the full compact that we have to look at. And the, the, there, in the compact, there are provisions regarding defense and security. And those are the provisions that ensure that the United States will be committed 
to the defense of the Federalist States of Micronesia. If that compact is no longer in existence, those conditions no longer apply. And so, to answer your question, the, the, uh, a, an independent state of Chuuk would be obliged to raise its own military. So, is it fair to say that Chuuk Chu would be a battle ground for the superpowers? That's what it does. <laughs> Ask the Royal Asian. It appears like, except for the economists who spoke first, all of these other people are lawyers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a lawyer either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Your Excellency, if I may uh, speak on behalf of others who are not here, express our sincere appreciation for you to take the time. Thank you. to come to our state and make it clear out of your own speaking or we say of your own mouth <laughs> the U.S. policy as it will apply to Chu, should Chu decides to take uh, uh, an option for independence in a freely uh, fair election and I'm also happy that you said you would respect that because that's part of democracy. But I'm grateful that you explained to also us the ramifications of what would happen. And it should be made clear that you are speaking, as again, on behalf of the United States government. I was fortunate to be part of the government. You know, I'm a social security guy, very old. I was part of the initial, at end of the first negotiation, and member of the second negotiation all the way. I understand the difficulties that we face. The first one, as you pointed out, it came out at a very different <coughs> historical setting. So it was a little bit more favorable to us. Come up to was difficult because the change, uh, the world has changed uh, substantially. And so it gets a little bit more difficult. So, I just want this to, for our Chukis to understand well that the world has changed, attitudes has changed, and you have correctly pointed out that our friends, when we were there in those old days, are no longer here. Just recently, our friends, the delegation of Hawaii, had communicated to the administration that they wanted to, quote unquote, question the immigration section. We look to Hawaii as our friends, but even they, have begun to change their ways of thinking. But, so I will not question about US policy, but you made it clear. But you said something which I want to ask your assistance on. You pointed out that you would help to, in any way you can, during your term of uh, office as U.S. Ambassador to the United States of Micronesia. The movement came out, as I understand it, as a result of our concern of the Tarak Grants um, ending in 2023, and the fact that everybody uh, understand that the trust fund would not be sufficient to provide the necessary yields to run the government. So the FSM governments, not just two, went around talking to all the states and said, look, if we reach that stage, we will have a problem. This is the amount of money you will be short of, and let us figure out a way to uh, make up that deficiencies. And that is where I wanted to ask your assistance. Because sometimes two states claim the Jemgo or the grand manager or um, the FSM governments are slow in processing funds that belong to us because the comeback is quite clear that when the money comes in, it is subject to, of course, our own internal law. And we divided up the money by law, 41% around that uh, uh, figure belongs to two. 
This is the MSF Congress. So. But we, we have difficulty accessing those funds. Those funds would be needed to position ourselves come 2023. And that's where I respectfully ask for your assistance for our state. If they come to you for assistance, please uh, show them the way to access those funds so we can uh, better position ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. I certainly appreciate the, the comment and I understand the difficulty sometimes of getting the funding out of the national government. I can assure you that is not Chuk alone. I think all four states have the same complaints. And there is an issue there. And there we're, you know, it's it is a bit of a difficulty with the way the, the country is set up with a national government that's uh, kind of far away from Chuk and Yap and Kosher in particular. Um, but we are working with, we work in Jemco and we work with the national government to, to, to mitigate those, those issues. Um, we're, I think uh, you were also referring to preparing for 2023, and that's certainly uh, a big concern of mine. Uh, I think we need to enlist since there will be a fall in the funding from after 2023, uh, when they move, when you move from direct financial assistance to the proceeds from the trust fund, there will be less funding available. So we need to look at, at other ways of making that up. And uh, I'm looking at better focusing our U.S. government agencies to better uh, to better meet the needs of the FSM. I'm looking to enlist our allies and our multilaterals and NGOs. Uh, and that's, that's really at the beginning stages. And I think the FSM has a very valuable resource in the Joint Compact Review and Planning Commission, the JCRP, headed by Asterio Takasi. I think that is, they have very good ideas on how the FSM, they've got, they're actually looking at three, they're, they've got, they're phasing this in three parts, but the first part is what can the FSM do to prepare? And uh, I think they have lots and lots of good ideas. So I would definitely heed what they say. And, you know, I think the whole point of the Compact of Free Association is self-reliance and economic development. And that's a challenge. And that's been a challenge for a long time. That's ha it's happening, but it's happening maybe not as quickly as some of us would wish. Um, but I think we can use that post-2023 date as kind of a way of concentrating our minds and deciding how we can make all of this work. Uh, I, I am working with the JCRP. We've got a U.S. government in, interagency group in Washington that's addressing this. They're very concerned. There is a government, uh, government county office, GAO report, that's in front of Congress that's also addressing these issues. Um, so we've got a lot of folks looking at this and a lot of folks who are concerned and want to ensure that the FSM makes it over this hump in, in good order and, and without too many difficulties. And so it's, it's, it is, that is actually my number one concern, it's something I'm very concerned about, very, we're working very hard on, and um, again, we're kind of at the, it's only five years away, and we're still not where we want to be, not where I want to be, but, Nonetheless, uh, I think people are starting to get the message, and I think people are starting to come forward and, and looking at ways to, uh, to get ready, get the FSM ready, get Chuk ready, get all four states ready for this change after 2023. Thank you.
Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Chuk, Ambassador. Thank you. I saw a lady raise her hand. She wanted to come. She's actually my mom. So I beat, <laughs> I beat her. Uh, welcome to Chuk. What do you want me to say? Go ahead. Uh, my name is Kempo Mita. Just to give you a brief history about myself, uh, I'm currently the CEO for Chuk Public Utility Corporation. Uh, the comments I am making today has nothing to do with CPUC. Uh, I'm making these comments as a Chukis. Uh, <clears throat> a brief history about myself, uh, Ambassador. I am an attorney. Went to law school in Michigan. I'm licensed in Michigan. I clerked for the U.S. Court of Appeals. My wife and I own a hotel in Chuk, L5 Hotel. I also am a shareholder in the largest law firm in the FSM, Rampant Mita Law Firm. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that I care deeply about Chuk. That's why I came back to Chuk. So I have no, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell the people now whether to vote yes or to vote no on independence. Uh, my message today is that as a lawyer, we have to tell our clients what the facts are of the case. We have to research a client's case and give them all the answers they need before they can make a decision on their case. I feel that the commission, I mean no, no disrespect to our commission, uh, many of the people on the commission are great men who have built this country and have done great things for our country and Chuk State. Uh, I was also asked to be on the commission and I turned down the offer. I feel that the commission needs to answer questions for the people. There are many questions that the commission cannot answer, legal questions. Before the people vote, we have to have these questions answered. One question I have for you, Ambassador, is if Chuk votes yes to be independent, when will it take effect, our right to travel, or the right to travel be taken away? How soon after that will we be prevented from traveling? The, uh, the changes that I discussed previously, the loss of the compacts, would occur after full independence. So once the, the, the Chuk is fully independent, the FSM no longer part of the legal entity of the Federated States of Micronesia, then that would be that would be the time. Thank you, Ambassador. And I think that is for me that is the most important concern I have for our people. Can we travel to the U.S. freely? Can we return? What about the Chukis out there? We have thousands of Chukis in the U.S. What will happen to them? Does the Commission know the answers to these? I would say no. The Commission does not know the answer. So before we vote yes, moving forward, we have to have answers to these. And think about the ramification of our people both here in Chuk and outside of Chuk. So I would ask the people that before you, you vote yes, to make sure you have all the answers to the questions that we have. This forum is a good start, but we're not going to get the answers from today. If you look at Brexit, they decided to break off and they don't know the answer and it's a first, first world country. So I would say, let's take a step back as Chukis and think about this. I'm not saying vote no or vote yes, but let's be careful how we decide to move and get all the answers before we move forward. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Okay, the Postmaster General would like to speak. <laughs> My good friend. America where I think it, I pronounce it Chuk. Uh, welcome, Ms. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador. Uh, I heard about this yesterday. 
uh, during lunchtime, and I was very concerned as a mother. I am a Panapean married to a Chuki, so I consider myself Phil Faichuk. <laughs> and I am here for a reason. I am here to build a post office in Faichuk to help the people of Faichuk. There's 23,000 people out there that has not been helped for many, many years. And I think it's time now for a post office to help the people in Faichu. Post office is a very important, very, very important to the people. Because you know why? Even with computers today, you cannot reach in a computer and say, Wadukara Sefe, where Mama Semman. You will say, send us Sefe to the post office. So we are still very important. My question here, uh, Ms. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador, like I said, I'm here to build a post office in Faichu, and I missed the first uh, part of the whole uh, conversation that went on. With the comeback, I understand it's not going to end. The funding part will end. Now with me building a post office in Faichu, I am wondering, how will I survive? This is a very important part as a postmaster general for me, as a mother, as a leader, to help fight you. Now, to hear the U.S. stopping funding, my question is, how will I survive? Uh, right now, we have opened up, since I came on board, we opened up a new post office in Kushai. Uh, Yap is getting better, Chuk Pompei is getting better. We have a post office at the airport to kind of help us financially. The idea is to help the people that travels, help the local people, and also make money to help our nation. And this is what I think uh, Ambassador explained about the financial part, that we all have to take part. And that's what I have been doing as a postmaster general. Chuk is gonna open a small post office at the airport. And that's to help you when you travel. And you have, uh, you know a lot of us, when we travel, we have corn, pura, eat meson, and it's overweight. So when it's overweight, you can go to that post office at the airport, and we help you. We'll send it for you. It's going to be a shop. That will bring in finance to help our nation, to help the post office. So going back to my question, Ambassador, Will the United States continue to help the U.S. Postal Service? And if not, what can I do or what can we do to help ourselves? That's my first question. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a good question. And uh, unfortunately, the news is not terribly good. As you know, uh, the General Accounting Office, as I said before, uh, is very concerned about uh, the preparations going towards 2023, and while they were going through all of the motions of, of deciding what has to be done and who should do what, they were making a list of what, it, I don't know if you're all aware, but there are 50, more than 50 U.S. government components working here in Chuuk and in the FSM. More than 50. Lots. Many, 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 many U.S. government agencies and components still working here. So the, the question that the GAO had is, which of these components can continue and which are required by current law to cease operations after 2023? Their determination was the vast majority can continue after 2023, but there are certain exceptions, one of which, unfortunately, is the post office. Yes. So the post office, according to the GAO, must cease operations under current law after 2023. And I would stress under current law that there is a possibility that could change. I wouldn't hold up that as a as a very likely proposition, uh, but there is 
Congress could change its mind. Um, if it did change its mind, it would probably have to be something cost neutral. I don't think they're going to be willing to spend more money. Uh, so as long as it's something that doesn't cost money, they may be willing to do it. What that is, I have no idea. And I can't even begin to, to uh, imagine what that might be. I'm sure you probably have a, some ideas. Um, this is something that just came to light. I think it was in May when the GAO report was issued. So this is a relatively recent development. Uh, so I'm concerned about that, and I know that you are. We've discussed this before about the post office in general and how things are working. Um, and uh, so uh, I don't know, I'll be quite honest, I don't know how this is all going to work out, but uh, I understand your concern. And uh, I think the position of the post office is, you know, they, they are losing billions of dollars already. I mean, they, in the United States, they're losing billions of dollars, uh, and they're losing money here, so they're trying to find ways of saving money. And so their, their, their current concern right now is, how can we reduce uh, the money that we're losing? Not just here, in the, not just in Micronesia or in the MSM or in Chuk or what have you, throughout their operations. And so that's kind of a, that's something that they're trying to push down to all their offices. How can we reduce, you know, the loss of our, the, the, the money we're losing every year? Uh, so I think the FSM is caught up in that too. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult question and uh, I don't, doesn't have any easy answers, but it's certainly something I'm concerned about and following closely. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, I have another question. I'm not satisfied with that answer that I got. <laughs> I'm sure you're not. <laughs> if I have to go to Washington and fight for us, I will fly to Washington. Please do. Uh, I think it's very important. I recently just came back from Washington, and when I was up there, I argued with them. Uh, I felt good. Uh, it, you know, it's very important to go up there and talk to them. I think if they, they hear us, they will help us. If they hear the positive, they will help us. We can't have a group that will lead us that won't help us. We need every voice. Everybody's important. Uh, it's about people. It's about our nation. And right now, I think uh, I will vote no uh, for my own opinion, uh, to be honest, because uh, it involves everybody. Uh, I'm not going to keep my own opinion because I also vote in Chuk and um, my children are Chukis and my, I'm a mother in Chuk, although I'm from Pulpe. My next question, Ambassador, is... Uh, thank you. It is so careful to have me in I heard my son, uh, Kembo, uh, was talking about immigration. Uh, I was just wondering about immigration with all of these changes. If the people here realize how free we are going into the United States, the freedom we have that almost no other nation have. We don't need a visa. We just travel with a passport. I mean, even going to China, we need a visa, or Japan, or Singapore, or Asian country need visas. I remember the first four fathers when they came on board. Uh, I, Nakayama, they fought for us. And that was one key thing that I thanked them for it. The immigration. Now for us to go independent, I'll tell you, Mary will be wayless. Wayless. This kind of freedom we have in the United States, I will vote no right now for this separation. As a mother, I'm speaking for myself. And I'm brave enough to say what I feel. Yeah, uh, medicine. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, I, I don't know about my answer about immigration. You know how important it is. What would happen to them? Well, it is, uh, it, it is a very unique, it is unique in the world. The, the, the relationship, the immigration status that the the uh, citizens in the three freely associated states of Palau, uh, 
Marshall Islands and the Federated States of Micronesia is unique in the world. It doesn't exist anywhere else. That's absolutely true. And uh, I, I think you're, you're right. That there, is, there is no other, there is nothing else like it. And even the European nations, they have uh, visa waiver programs, but they still have that requirement to, to, to uh, apply for that. And uh, you all here don't have to do that. So that's a, that is an important clarification. Yes, and somebody mentioned Trump. Why do you mention Trump? Trump wanted to build a wall. Trump is not giving us a wall. It's the other side of the world. We still have our freedom. We travel with a passport. Thank you, Ambassador Kirisota Murami. Okay, so we will uh, open for one more question and then we end our forum for this morning. So, Anybody? Please. No question from uh, Sari? Carter? Yes, or no question? Okay, since you're from the same place, uh, Bayview, Linda will represent you. I'd like to start by paying my respect to Your Excellency and thanks for giving us this time. And also, all the men from leaders to uncles, grandpas, brothers and cousins sitting here in our culture. I'm up here because I'm Chukis, I'm Ephesim, and also I have a heart for U.S. At the same time, I feel very scared of what's going on, what's transpiring over the years. 